and the second defining moment, Arsenal's loss meant the City players could sing this. will finish second. Now Newcastle and Manchester United need one more point from their two games to qualify for the Champions League next season, which put Liverpool in the Europa League places right now in fifth. Brighton will clinch some European football for the first ever time if they win today against Southampton. They can actually finish as high as fifth. And Villa right now sitting in a Europa Conference League spot can also finish as high as sixth. So Manchester City have done the three-peat. Plenty more on that to come throughout today and just look at that dominance since way back in 2012 they have certainly dominated English football. It's a special day to be a Manchester City fan they'll lift the trophy a little bit later on full coverage of course is coming your way Tim Howard, Robbie L, Rebecca Lowe with you all day we have our team in England which we will get to shortly as well but I want to start by talking about this great mm -hmm. great Manchester City team. They are champions they have done it but in January Tim we were at the Fan Fest in yeah. Florida. They were 2-0 down to Tottenham at halftime, came back to win that game by four goals to two. That was the day that Pep Guardiola mm -hmm. called them a team of happy flowers. I've lost my team. I don't recognise them. That's what he said. Mm -hmm. Look at them now. How have they done it? Um, it's in, in breathtaking fashion. Uh, a famous boxer once said, it's hard to get out of bed when you see, sleep in satin sheets. And that they're, they're, what he means is... The, the tough sledding is easy to do when you don't have anything. The hard miles are easy to do when you don't have anything. But their trophy case is filled. And I just, this team I questioned, when they went eight points behind the Arsenal, I backed Arsenal to the hills up until, you know, I didn't see the cracks coming uh, with that team. And I just thought, I don't know if City have it this year. They have so much. They can focus on the Champions League. That's eluded them. And then they just blew us away. Then, then they, they, they have the ability to go and win double-digit winning streaks, it, no one can match that. They always have a little wrinkle t tactically. Pepe, he understands his players better than anybody else understands. It's breathtaking to watch. And they've done, Robbie, the three P. Mm. Only Sir Alex Ferguson yeah. on two occasions with Manchester United has managed a three P in the Premier League and in English football. What a feat that is. What do you make of it? Well, it's interesting you mentioned Sir Alex Ferguson because he once labelled Manchester City as the noisy neighbours. Now they're the standard bearers of English mm. football. And... It's not something I think we naturally do in football. Certainly it's a bit non-British, but we don't recognise greatness that, that easily. And, and this is greatness we're talking about. Five in six, Rebecca. Three on the, on the bounce. Three that is one very different. You know, you, you win a title with Aguero, 21 goals at the top of the pitch. You win a title with a false nine. You win a title with a freak nine. You, you, they, they can find different ways of winning football and, and winning the, the Premier League. And the underlying thing for me about Manchester City is the hunger with which they play. They're champions who play like challengers. They don't take a day off. They make the, uh, the opposition submit. You, you tap out in football terms. They have so much possession and so much dominance. We've never seen football like this in the Premier League. OK, let's take you then to the home of the champions, to the Etihad Stadium. We have a pitch side desk for the build-up to City Chelsea later, but before they get themselves set, Peter Drury, Lee Dixon and Graham Lasso took a stroll out onto the field at the Etihad. Well, good morning to you from a beautiful scene here. Currently a very serene scene. It is quiet. There is fittingly a beautiful blue sky. We have a smiling sunshine as well on what should be a party day. A party day. And Lee, from a, a player's point of view, and you've been there, to arrive this morning, knowing yeah. it's done and it's all for fun, Yeah. how must that be? Fantastic. Well, I, I think the celebrations will have been a little bit different than we celebrated when we won it with a few games to go, that's for sure. Um, I'm pretty sure they were very professional last night. I'd be very surprised if they didn't have some sort of celebration, um, a couple of maybe shandies, but 
They're so professional. They've got a lot of big games ahead of them. I think that's the thing. If you win the league at the end of the season and it's all over, then you're, you're in party mode. But Peppel have kept them all together. I'm pretty sure that's the key. If you keep them all together, the players, and celebrate as a team, like they've done everything as a team this season, they've been absolutely outstanding, then um, they'll come in maybe a little bit tired today, but that, it'll probably make a few fr few changes which will freshen the team up for sure. But well, what, what, what an occasion for and them. And they're sure to want to perform. I, I wonder, Graham, whether, as we now start to look back on the season, whether, truth be told, in hindsight, yes, we always suspected it might end this way. There was, of course, a lot of excitement around Arsenal, and for a long time it's been a really good race. But did we all deep down know that City were this relentless? <clears throat> I think there's always a point where you know that Manchester City are going to go on a run. Um, in February, they started against Bournemouth. By mid-March, they were in full flow. They played three games against Leipzig, Burnley and then Liverpool in three different competitions in a couple of weeks, scored 17 goals, conceded one. So they were on a march by then. But I, I think it would be a lie if any of us said we didn't think Arsenal had a chance because Arsenal kept getting over the, the hurdles. They were outstanding against Newcastle a few weeks ago and really stood up in that occasion. And there's always an advantage when you're ahead. You always feel like you're in slightly more control of the situation, but just the might of Manchester City, and I've never seen them play this well over the course of sort of four months as they have done post, uh, post World Cup. And, and it seemed at some point that they were just unstoppable and they were going to make up those points. And yeah, I'm a bit disappointed they've won it with three to go um, <laughs> so because I. I think Arsenal have been absolutely <laughs> terrific. Yeah. Um, it shows how well Arsenal have done. But, you know, it's uh, credit to Manchester City and their, their work ethic. And, of course, there's the possibility, as we know, of the treble to come. Inter, Manchester United will have something to say about that. But there we are. 41 weeks it is since, uh, on a very similar gorgeous day in London town, Erling Haaland won and then converted the penalty that sent Manchester City on their way. And just about exactly 24 hours after Taiwo Awani scored that goal for Nottingham Forest that eventually eliminated Arsenal, at about 10 to 1 Eastern, the final whistle will blow here and the real party will begin. Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch more videos all season long. For even more Premier League content, from original series to live matches, head over to Peacock and be sure to tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend on USA Network and on Peacock. We will see you over there.